Welcome back to Crypto Live Leak, and today we're going to discuss what is a stable coin. I could care less about Bitcoin. I don't know why I, <laughs> I don't know why I said anything about it. So what is a stable coin? Stable coins are price stable cryptocurrencies, meaning the market price of the stable coin is pegged to another stable asset like the US dollar. For example, Bitcoin and Ethereum are two of the dominant cryptocurrencies, but their prices are very volatile. Speculation on cryptocurrencies can fuel this volatility. In the long run, this hinders real world adoption. Businesses and consumers do not want to be exposed to the unnecessary currency risk when transacting in cryptocurrencies locally. You can't pay someone a salary in Bitcoin if their purchasing power of their wages keeps fluctuating. Cryptocurrency volatility also hinders numerous other applications that require price stable asset. And of course, there's a majority of people who don't want to speculate. They just want to store and use money on a censorship resistant ledger using blockchain technology. The idea of a price stable cryptocurrency has been in the air for a long time. Because of all these reasons stated, it has been thought of as the holy grail of cryptocurrencies, something that's price stable. At a high level, there are three types of stable coins, fiat collateralized coins, crypto collateralized coins, and non-collateralized coins. A fiat collateralized stablecoin is a cryptocurrency that is backed by real world currency like the US dollar that works by depositing dollars into a bank account and issuing stablecoins in a one to one ratio against those dollars. When a user wants to liquidate their stablecoins back into USD, you destroy their stablecoins, taking it out of circulation and wire them US dollar. In this case, we could associate our example with Tether. This asset should definitely trade at $1. It is less a peg than just a digital representation of a dollar. Some examples of this type of stablecoin are again, Tether and True USD. Another example of a company pursuing this model is the JPM coin, recently introduced the JP Morgan coin. This is the simplest type of stablecoin, which is a great advantage, both helping people to understand how it works and implementing the solutions that we discussed. It is also 100% price stable because of each coin, there is $1 in the reserve bank account that can be redeemed at any time. And perhaps most importantly, it's less vulnerable to hacks because this collateral is held within the traditional banking system. Nothing is actually held on the blockchain. Fiat collateralized stablecoins are inherently centralized because they need a trusted custodian to store the real money. Otherwise, they will be vulnerable to theft. You also need to have auditors who will periodically check on the custodians and make sure their bank accounts have enough money stored in the reserves. The centralization aspect of wiring back the US dollar amount if this stablecoin is redeemed can be slow and expensive as it implements the traditional banking system. Now, next, we have the idea of crypto collateralized stablecoins. They operate in the same way as fiat backed stablecoins, but are backed with reserves of another cryptocurrency, as opposed to the fiat currency like US dollar. This way, the entire system can live on the blockchain and remain decentralized. MakerDAO's DAI is the most prominent example of a crypto collateralized stablecoin. One major difference to note between fiat backed stablecoins and crypto backed stablecoins is the ratio between the collateral and the stablecoin, also known as the collateralization ratio. Because fiat currency is generally stable, we can use a one to one collateralization ratio, where for each coin, we have $1 stored in reserve. Using a one to one collateralization ratio for crypto backed stablecoins, however, would make the stablecoin just as volatile. So collateral backing which would defeat the purpose. For this reason, crypto backed stable coins are over collateralized, which means for every dollar of the stable coin, there is more than one dollar of cryptocurrency in reserve. The more volatile the cryptocurrency is, the higher this ratio would have to be to ensure that even if the price drops, there will still be one dollar in reserve for every stable coin in circulation. There are a lot of advantages to using a crypto collateralized stable coin. First and foremost, it is fully decentralized and can benefit from the inherent virtues of the blockchain. Stable coins can be liquidated quickly and cheaply into the underlying crypto collateral with a simple blockchain transaction. The entire system is also very transparent. Everyone can easily inspect the history of transactions, the collateralization ratios of a particular crypto asset, and how much reserves actually exist in the system at a given time. Compared to the fiat collateralized cryptocurrencies, which are inherently much more centralized and less transparent. For all they promise, however, crypto collateralized stablecoins still face some challenges. Having to deal with the volatility of the cryptocurrency market means that the stablecoins are not as price stable as the fiat backed coins. 
and can be auto-liquidated during a price crash of the underlying collateral, which would essentially mean that holders of the stablecoin would lose their collateral. Accounting for this volatility means having to over-collateralize, which ultimately makes for an inefficient use of capital, because for every dollar you put in, you can only take out the same percentage less than that dollar. Crypto collateralized coins are also rather complex in design and have to resort to very intricate and sometimes non-intuitive measures to ensure the stability, which makes their adoption more difficult. The last type of stablecoin is a non-collateralized stablecoin. And you can tell from the name, it aims to maintain stability without relying on a collateral in reserve. This might sound a bit odd, but it's not that crazy of an idea. In fact, fiat currencies have been able to do this for decades by using central banks to control the monetary supply. The total supply of these coins are determined by supply and demand. If there are more people who want a currency, then there are units of that currency available, price of that currency will go up, and vice versa. Central banks use this information to ensure a currency's price stable by printing new money when the price of a currency goes up and buying back and destroying money when the price of a currency goes down. Non-collateralized stable coins want to do the same thing by coding logic into smart contracts contracts, they can perform the functions of a central bank. These smart contracts will use oracles to monitor the price of the stablecoin on exchanges and will create new coins when the price goes up and buy back and destroy coins when the price goes down. Currently, the most promising project in this category is Basis. A non-collateralized coin is independent from all other currencies. Even if the US dollar and Ether collapse, a non-collateralized coin could survive them as a stable store of value. Unlike the central banks of nation states, a non-collateralized stable coin would have to preserve incentives to inflate or deflate the currency. Its algorithm would have one global mandate, stability. This is an exciting possibility, and if it succeeds, a non-collateralized stable coin could radically change the world. But if it fails, it would be even more catastrophic as there would be no collateral to liquidate the coin back into, and the coin would almost certainly crash to zero. This system also has some inherent complexities and can be rather opaque and difficult to analyze. Most importantly though, it relies on faith and its stability to continually grow, just like national fiat currencies do, which makes it very difficult to adopt at this early stage when faith in cryptocurrencies themselves hasn't been solidified. 